I still exist. I promise. I'm still here. Ah, <sighs> long time. Unexpected long time. Um, I have a quick little bit, about 20 minutes left for my lunch break, and I thought, hey, it is Friday. What better to do on a Friday than Friday reads and a little bit of a Friday catch-up since it's been, uh, what, two months? I'm not sure. I, I didn't go back and look at my last video, but I intended to keep keep the Friday Reads ball rolling and it just fell flat on its face when I ended up with COVID. Yep. Three years, three years of vaccinations, not having it, and my mother-in-law gave it to me. Didn't get it out in public from anybody, but it trickled down from nephew to sister-in-law to mother-in-law to me. Thankfully, thankfully my husband did not get it. I'm so glad because uh, COVID is the worst. Even being vaccinated and boosted, it was awful. Now, I say that I have been much sicker in my life for sure, um, but COVID is a different breed. Um, definitely the, the, the coughing and the lung congestion and <clears throat> having to have, I still feel like I have side effects. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's been about two months since Either I got it or finally tested negative. It, it took a long time. It took quite a while to test negative again finally, but it put a damper on Easter and all of those things. So, um, yeah, I would say with me for COVID, it was, oddly enough, like my sense of smell was only gone for like a day and it came back and it was fine, but it was the sense of taste. If you've heard people talk about it, like everything tasted awful like metallic bitter and just that and knowing like you can't even you're sick and you want something to comfort you and it just tastes awful um I can say like the only two things that stayed the same and tasted okay were better cheddar's crackers and um Snyder's honey roast honey roasted sorry uh honey mustard pretzels I have no clue why like everything else gross those two things tasted just absolutely fine so I subsisted on you know don't get me wrong I still ate because I'd be like this is gross I'm gonna try this this is gross I'm gonna try this so it's not like you know any weight loss journey because you're sick you just keep trying <laughs> but yeah it, it was uh steroids and inhalers and vitamins and a whole lot of everything but I'm back uh, to, we'll say 98%. Like I said, I still have the, the coughing sometimes and the sense of taste came back, I would say maybe a couple of days after I tested negative. So that was my biggest worry. I'm like, I have to know what my Diet Coke tastes like. I have to know. <laughs> so we're fine. Um, I would like to say that, you know, while I was sick in a way, I did a ton of reading, but this has been a really like low volume reading year for me, you know, in comparison to years past. Like years past, I think it was like COVID year, I read 350 books and then the next year, 275 or something like that. It was crazy numbers. And this year, I don't expect, I mean, I expect to hit my Goodreads goal. Um, I think I set it at 75. I'll hit that, but I don't expect to... I don't even think that I'll get to 100 or over 100. Uh, I'm not naysaying, but it's just one of those years of I just, I'm not feeling it. Like, I say that, but in, in the years past, I've done a lot of audiobooks and a lot of reading for the number of books that I have read. Like, Quantity versus quality. I'd like to say that this year I'm quality over quantity, but oh, I've read some stinkers. Like the, I would say there have been three or four that have been really good and everything else is just, eh, it's mediocre. So hoping to turn that around, hoping to find some, some good ones. Um, I'll go digging in all of my stashes and shelves to see if I can find one or two to try for June on the range last year I think I read three for June on the range I know for sure that I read um oh gosh I read a million days to die in the west it was a reread for me and um the Virginian 
The Virginian was a letdown. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would, um, but I do have some Zane Grey. I do have lots and lots of historical romance westerns, so I have plenty to pick from. I mean, I may even reread A Million Ways to Die in the West for, you know, my yearly. It's just, it, it makes, it puts me in a good mood. It's good. So, um, there's that. I haven't participated in any other, like I wanted to do Asian readathon and my heart wasn't in it. Um, that's one of those COVID side effects of like, it just kind of depresses you, honestly. Like I was majorly in the worst mental state. Um, not because, you know, not because of anything. It just, it makes you feel awful. But we're not talking about that now. Um, I do have my iPad here so I'll look and see and kind of refresh you a little bit on what I did read um since we'll say since my last one if you hear this again and you're like Lindsay you talked about that in your last one I, I have had things happen <laughs> since then so um let's see War and Peace I did finish War and Peace uh if you think it's cheating I did listen to most of it on audio um, it was palatable. It was easier to read than people think. Um, they kind of like, oh my gosh, it's this many pages. It's daunting. It's scary. It's not. It's a lot of filler. And I get it for when it was published. You were wanting a bigger book to keep you occupied. It's not necessarily a requirement this day, these days. But I put that it was more palatable than people think, but not extraordinarily special. So... If it's your favorite book, if you loved it more than me, that's great. I could see myself enjoying it in the BBC miniseries. Um, go and watch it. Definitely for sure will, but no. Um, I read Homecoming by Cynthia Boyd. It was a reread for me. Um, it was a read with a friend, a buddy read um, for our, we're doing a yearly challenge and it's one, one um, prompt per month. So nothing, nothing scary. Uh, then I did Queen Bee by Dorothea Benton Frank. Uh, it was, it was good. About midway, it kind of started going off the rails. So didn't, didn't love it, but it was enjoyable for what it was. And I do have a bunch more of her books that I need to read. Uh, I read Paris, the memoir by Paris Hilton. Oh yes, I did. I have always been a sucker for a good celebrity memoir, which you'll see in what I'm reading now. So I actually gave it four stars. Like, People hear me say Paris Hilton. They hear Paris Hilton. They're like, uh, trust me. There's some stuff that went on in her life that she developed her ditzy persona to cope. So whatever preconceived notions that you have, you may want to change those. And then we have a uh, Latin in the Attic was a reread. Shelf of Silverstein. It was a book of poetry was our prompt for, um, April, I do believe. So that was my book of poetry. I loved Shel Silverstein as a kid. Um, also did American Heiress by Dorothy Eden. It was a like 1980s cheesy historical romance and it was supposed to be based off of the Lusitania and the Lusitania getting bombed and um, the housemaid switches places with her mistress because the mistress is killed and she pretends to be the mistress to get married to this rich guy. And it's like, how do you people not know this is not her? And they ended up together even after he was a giant turd, but it was awful. It was terrible. Um, you will not have my hate by Antoine. L L I'm, I'm not French. Lere. L I think it's Lere. Um, <clears throat> his wife was killed in, um, oh gosh, the, bombing oh gosh it's um yeah it was a concert that she was killed in back in 2015 and he it was him um dealing with the grief and trying to still raise their like basically less than two year old son and he refused to be angry at the person angry at the situation and kind of tried to to deal with it. It was okay. Uh, the Face Maker by Lindsay Fitzharris. It was a nonfiction about uh, a surgeon's battle to mend the disfigured soldiers of World War One. It was fine. Um, you're gonna hear a lot of that. It was fine. I appreciated it just for the fact of I have had to have plastic surgery in my life. Uh, if you can see, if you're new, you've never heard the story. 
This was a three-year-old having her face laid open by a dog. So you can imagine how much bigger it was on a child's face. And the fun bullying that I got out of that, I was told that it looked like I had a map of Guam on the side of my face. That was a fight that I won, just saying. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was interesting finding out the rudimentary beginnings of plastic surgery. It definitely benefited me in the long run. Could I have could I have had more to have an improved appearance? Yes, but at this point in time, it's not as noticeable as when I was growing up, and I don't care. Um, the Housemaid's Secret, which was by Frieda McFadden, it was the sequel to The Housemaid. Uh, honestly, disappointing. Was not as good as The Housemaid. Um, it was it was it was fine. <laughs> I I do enjoy Frieda McFadden. I've read another one, which we'll go over since then uh, that's been better uh electric barracuda it's number 13 uh in the surge storm series by tim dorsey i can't remember how many books there are but i still have quite a ways to go on those they're fine they're they're amusing they're good for what they are um i don't know if i should mention that my sister is a kindergarten teacher and she told me to read um Wendy, Wendy Silvano's children's books. The main character is a turkey. She's like, you are the type of personality that would find them funny. So they take three minutes to read. So it was Turkey's Santastic Beach Day, which is very appropriate for this time of the year. So you know, giggle. They're, uh, most of them are on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, when Elves Attack, which was number 14 in the Surge Storms and Pineapple Grenade, uh, 15. Same series. So we're getting caught up. Uh, Summer Secrets at Streamside Cottage by Samantha Tong. I'm not sure she's a British author. Uh, it was cute. Uh, the Ch Chibok, Chibok Girls. I'm not sure. The Boko Haram. It was bad. Not just circumstantial. It was it was bad. It was not very well written. Riptide Ultra Glide, number 16 in the Surge Storms. Never Lie by Fried Mc. Frida McFadden, that one I gave four stars to. It was it was good. And I'm listening to another one of hers on audiobook right now, which I have to get to it because it's getting ready to expire. Um, two Part Sugar, One Part Murder, Baker Street Mystery Number 1 by Valerie Burns. That one was cute. So I can't say that I have had ho-hum. Um, definitely cute. I think there's a second one out that I'm on hold from the library, but it is um, super, super cute. Um, and then Alaska by Kay Webster. I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with Kay Webster. Um, don't do it. I read one other of hers. Is it Wilderness? I don't know if it was Wilderness. If you want to be shocked and grossed out, read Kay Webster. If not, I do not suggest it. Um, I'm not done with this, but let me pull it back up here. Um, I am currently reading, since this is a Friday Reads and not Friday, um, what did you read? I mean, it's part of it. It's a wrap up. Um, I am currently listening to The Wife Upstairs by Frida McFadden. I'm not far along in it to know much of anything about it, but I will probably listen to it in its completion tomorrow since I'll be in the car so that's fine and then I have this book is old I know it's old uh confession confessions of a prairie bitch by Allison Arngrim um it's okay like I'm not that far into it uh it's fine but if you want to see my bookmark is more fun it's a golden girls bookmark it's super cute um I could if I wanted to sit down and and Finish this off in no time because the celebrity memoir books are, are easy, palatable. Like, you don't need brain power for them. Uh, but it's pretty sad what her brother did to her as a young child from six to nine. Disgusting. How he is not in prison. I mean, I think probably the statute of limitations is long gone on that. But uh, I have The Last Carolina Girl by Megan Church. I have not started it, but I am going to start it. It is a historical set in 1935. Um, and it says, set in 1935 against the very real backdrop of a recently formed state eugenics board. So, I have that. Um, I have two others checked out from the library. They're in the other room. Um, I don't know if I will 
finish them all before the, I just renewed them. So they have at least another two weeks. So when I will get to those, I bit off more than I could chew and had like 12 audiobooks checked out from the library. And I just went, no, don't do it. And returned all of them except the two Frida McFadden's and the next in the Surge Storms. I feel like there's another one, but it's on my phone and I can't save. Um, but like I said, it's been kind of a mediocre reading experience. Some of it may have to do with work and work stress. And I just at the end of the day, even though it's a good escape to read, I just don't have it in me. I don't have the brain power, but I'm hoping that that'll change. You know, maybe, maybe do some rereads of some of my favorite books. That'll help, um, kind of get me back into it. But other than that, like I said, I'll go digging and see what I have for June on the range. And then since next Friday will be at the beginning of June, June 2nd, I will have some to tell you about what I have picked and what I will be reading. Um, maybe what other reading plans or how much, how much I was able to accomplish in a week's time. You never know. I might make a challenge. I'm off Monday for Memorial Day, so it will be a long weekend for me. Um, I'll at least have part of Monday, I think, to read but we will see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'll just, just wing it. Um, kind of meet, mood read, whatever I decide to do. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows I don't have glasses on. I finally found contacts for the first time in my life that I actually can wear and I can actually see out of them and everything is clear and they're not shifting around in my eyes. So, have a follow up on that Tuesday to get a prescription. Phoebe says hello. I think she has a ball. She has a ball. What is it? That's, that's Phoebe. Um, to get a prescription for contacts. And I did still go ahead and pick out a new pair of glasses to have because at night time, after all, my eyes do get tired. And I will take them out, put my glasses on. So I'll, I'll show those to you when I get them. It'll take a week or two. Um, but other than that, um, I want to know what you're reading. Oh, I do have Happy Place from Emily Henry on hold from the library. It's been on hold for quite some time. I mean, I'm pretty sure the day it came out is the day that somebody checked it out. Like they had it immediately, but it's been like, I don't know if people have had late fees, but it's taking its time coming to me. Um, I've resisted buying it, buying the ebook and just like patience, patience, you know, maybe that patience is what you need to, to get you a really good book. So um, it's kind of on the tail end of the checkout period for the person that had it. And then that will put me first in line. So maybe in another two weeks, I will have it and be able to enjoy it. I've heard good things about it and I have enjoyed all of em Emily Henry's other books. Um, don't think I'm reading anything or watching anything exciting. But yeah, let me know what you're reading, um, what your favorite book is, maybe to get you out of a slump or type of genre if you switch it up but I have to get back to work I hope you guys are having a good week and if you are in the U.S. that you are off for Memorial Day or get to have some extra time but I hope everybody is well and I will talk to you later bye <laughs>